Let A and B be elements of a group G. We want to prove that the inverse of the product of A and B is equal to B inverse times A inverse. Keep in mind we're using multiplication, language, and notation, but of course we're just talking about a general group, so the group operation may not be traditional multiplication. Proving something is an inverse element is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is show that if we combine AB with B inverse A inverse, then we get the identity. If we can show that combining AB with B inverse A inverse in any order produces the identity element, which we're going to call E, then that proves that the inverse of A times B is B inverse times A inverse. So that's what we're going to prove in today's Wrath of Math lesson. The important part of this result that you should notice is that the inverse of A times B is B inverse A inverse, not A inverse times B inverse. So we see the A and B when we take the inverse of their product, their order reverses. Just imagine if we were trying to prove that this is the inverse of A times B, we wouldn't have much luck. Take a look at this. We would have this expression and we'd want to show that it's equal to E, the identity element. And there's really nothing we could do. We could group the elements slightly differently by associativity. So we could have A times B A inverse times B inverse. But what we would really want to do is combine A with A inverse so that they go to the identity and combine B with B inverse to produce the identity as well. But we can't do that because groups are not always commutative. So we can't just switch around the order uh, that we're combining these elements in. All we can do is change our parentheses, but we can't flip the order of the elements around. So we can see this wouldn't go anywhere. So enough of that, in just a minute we'll go through the quick proof of the actual result that if we combine A times B with B inverse A inverse in any order, that will produce the identity. Quickly, I just want to mention that this is sometimes called the socks shoes property, which I think is a cute little name for it. The idea is that if A is putting on your socks and B is putting on your shoes, the inverse of that, to take your socks and shoes off, you've got to flip the order around. You've got to take your shoes off first, that's B inverse, and then you can take your socks off. So when we take the inverse of a product, we just have to invert the elements in the product and reverse their order. And that's why it's sometimes called the socks shoes property. You put your socks on first and your shoes second, but to take them off, you gotta go in the opposite order. All right, now let's just quickly prove that this composition is equal to the identity and we'll be done with it. All we gotta do to start off is switch around our parentheses so that we can combine B with B inverse. So doing that, we have A times B times B inverse times A inverse. And just to point out a small detail, remember since A and B are elements of a group and groups have inverses, that's how we know these elements B inverse and A inverse exist so that we can use them in our proof. And we can rewrite these parentheses by associativity, which is a group axiom. B and B inverse, of course, combine to equal the identity. So this is equal to A times the identity times A inverse. And we could group these elements however we want. Let's say we group A with E like that. A combined with the identity is of course just A. So we are left with A combined with A inverse, which by definition of inverse is equal to the identity. And you might think to finish this proof, by definition of inverse, we'll also need to show that B inverse A inverse combined with AB in the opposite order is also equal to the identity. However, we really don't need to do that because the arbitrary elements A and B we took to begin with just as well could have been B inverse and A inverse. And then we would have gone through this exact same sequence of statements with slightly different elements. So if that makes sense to you, that's the end of the proof. If not, then just carry out this other part of the proof so you're comfortable. It's the same exact thing, so it won't take you any more than a few seconds. And that's the proof of the socks and shoes property for groups. The inverse of the product of two elements is the product of their inverses in the opposite order.
I hope this video helped you understand the proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description. Blind as bats, it's a sight to see Choirs in four-part disharmony When I'm high